Hello everyone, uh, here we go again with the equity method for um, investments. In this section, we'll be looking at additional issues uh, in dealing with the equity method. The first one is related to a change to the equity method. So if we were using the fair value method or cost method, and um, so we own less than the 20% interest in the company, we decide to purchase additional shares, uh, an additional interest, which increases our ownership percentage, uh, and it, it puts us into the range of the 20 to 50% ownership. So now we have to use the equity method. So what happens in that transition from the fair value method or cost method to the equity method? How are we going to report that on our financial statements? Uh, we are basically going to do this prospectively. So the year that we're making the change uh, from the cost of fair market value to the equity method and going forward. So we don't have to restate any um, prior periods. So here's an example. We have Alpha Company that acquires a 10% ownership in Bailey Company on January 1st, 2017 for $84,000. Um, Alpha Company at this point does not have significant influence over Bailey, so they are going to be using the fair value method. So basically under the fair value method, we're going to recognize our share of dividend income on our income statement, and then we're also going to recognize any changes in value uh, in our income statement, so any unrealized gains or losses from the fluctuation in fair market value. Uh, so as a result, at the end of 2017, our investment account, so we go to the balance sheet, we look at uh, Bailey Company's investment in Bailey Company, and it's gonna show a balance of 89,000. Uh, now, we disregard at this point Bailey's book value because we are not using the equity method. We only have a 10% interest, and so we really don't um, have any interest on their book value. Now, starting on January 1st, 2018, um, Alpha Company um, decides to purchase an additional 30%. So I want you to pay attention to these percentages, okay? So we started with a 10% and now we purchase an additional 30%, which means that we now own 40%. We have a 40% interest in Bailey, okay? Um, and so at this point, we are in, you know, we fall in that second category of the 20 to 50%, and therefore we're going to begin using the equity method of accounting to account for this investment. And so the amount that we purchase to um, acquire this additional 30% is 267,000. And so this 267000 the same way that we've been doing all along when we actually invest an amount um, of money or whatever to purchase the interest, we're going to add this to the investment in Bailey's account. So the investment Bailey's account, uh, we had 89000 balance. Now it's going to be increased by the 267000 And so now we need to look at, you know, what is Bailey's book value? Now we do care about Bailey's book value because we have to assess now that we uh, exercise significant influence, we need to make sure that we are reflecting this relationship on the balance sheet. And so we're going back to Bailey's uh, fair value, I mean, I'm um, sorry, uh, book value as of January 1st, 2018, when the um, additional shares were purchased. We're told that that value is 715,000, um, except in that there's no change, there's no differences between book and fair values. However, they do have a patent that is undervalued by 175,000. Okay. 
And so, like we said, we're going to debit investment in Bailey on January 1st, 2018 for 267. We're going to credit cash in this instance for 267. And so we're adding that 267 to the 89,000 balance. So we see that here reflected here. Um, and so now our balance is the 356,000. Uh, and we take 40% of Bailey's book value. We compare that to Bailey's book value and we have a difference of 70,000. So basically, we have to adjust, if necessary, our investment in Bailey's account uh, based on you know, any, any difference. We need to uh, reconcile any differences because, as you well know, well, we may have to, from previous presentation, that we will have to amortize whatever differences we have unless it's goodwill. And so the difference that we have here is 70,000. And if we take 40% of that patent, that undervalued patent of 175, then that difference ties exactly to our share of the undervalued uh, 70,000. And there's nothing, no unreconciled differences. So we don't have any goodwill. So as we well know, as we said from previous presentations, that this uh, 70,000 difference will have to be chipped away gradually. And we're going to do that with the amortization. And so we were told in the previous slide that the patent had a 10-year uh, value or life, I'm sorry. And so we're going to amortize the 70,000 by 10 years or 7,000 uh, amortization. And so in 2018, Bailey reports net income of 130,000. They declare dividends of 50,000. And as we know, we're going to have to report our share. In this case, it's the 40% share of the net income and dividends in our financial statements. And so in this case, they have actually netted the two amounts. Um, the net income are 40% of net income and 40% of the, um, I'm sorry, and the amortization. Uh, but we don't have to do this. Um, they also have done, I, I would prefer that you break it down and I'll show you that in just a few minutes. Um, then they also have their 40% of dividends and a decrease to the investment in Bailey company account. Um, I would prefer that for now we split it up in this way. Uh, so we have our investment in Bailey, the 40% of the 130,000. So we are increasing Bailey's um, 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 Alpha's investment in Bailey by uh, the 52,000 on the balance sheet. We are increasing Alpha's uh, net income by their share of Bailey's. Um, net income of 52000 and as a result of the amortization of the patent, then we're going to decrease the equity income by 7000 and decrease the investment by 7000 Uh The next part of this presentation, I'm just going to kind of drive through these uh, comprehensive income. Um, the main idea here is that if uh, the investee has uh, anything that is reported under um, other comprehensive income or any irregular items like discontinued operations, the investor would report um, their share of these items. Now, we're talking about uh, how do we deal with the investee's losses. Um, as we said before in a previous presentation, the T account, the investment in investee account that's reported on the balance sheet, 
is going to be increased by our share of net income, but it will also be decreased by our share of net losses. So we cannot expect that the company will have always net income. I mean, we wish, uh, but that may not be the case. And if it's not the case, then we have to also recognize those losses on the balance sheet. Now, um, as we said before, um, if it's a temporary decline, then we pretty much just ignore that. Uh, what we are concerned about is permanent declines in value. Okay, if the fair market value of the investee, of our share of the investee's um, investment um, decreases below the carrying amount that's on our balance sheet, then we will have to recognize an impairment loss. Now, if we continue to, let's say this is temporary, okay, due to perhaps COVID or any other economic reasons, and so, um, you know, they just have this bad um losses that just keep coming year after year and you are reducing pretty much the cost of your investment you cannot reduce it or we cannot reduce it below zero okay we cannot show a negative amount on the balance sheet so we're just gonna kind of bang these losses on the side and then when the company uh you know hopefully begins to um report net income and we're going to report our share of that net income then we will offset it with any of these carry over losses okay the final point that i want to make here in additional issues of the equity method is sales of uh, shares okay sales of our investment so again, we're making any changes. If there are changes, like let's say uh, we are uh, alpha, we own the 40% uh, of Bailey's, but now we decide that we're going to sell that investment. And so we're back to our 10%. So we're back to the fair value method. And so again, if that's the case, then we're still treating it prospectively as opposed to retrospective, okay? So we don't have to go back and restate. We're just gonna make the change in the current year, report that in our disclosures, and then move forward. Now, for the most part, maybe we're just reducing the investment, but we're still using the equity method. So in this case, we have a top company owns 40% of the 100,000 outstanding shares of bottom company and any excess investment uh, is considered goodwill. Uh, so of the 40, so 40% 40 of the 100,000 would be the 40,000 shares. Uh, these shares were acquired for 200,000. And so as of today, as of uh, January 1st, 2018, the balance uh, of this investment is 320,000. So if we were to issue a balance sheet on that day, this was the 320,000 would be reported on the balance sheet for this investment. And so on July 1st, so I have a timeline here. So we said January 1st is the $320,000 balance. And then on July 1st, we decide that we're going to sell 10,000 of our 40,000 shares. That means one fourth uh, of our investment for $110,000 in cash. Now, any um, income, net income from um, bottom company um, and dividends will have to be reported under the 40% ownership from January 1st through July 1st, right? Um, up until the point where we sell the shares. And so in this case, we were told that the 70,000 of net income and 30,000 of dividends represents the first six months. But in some other instances, they may have it on an annual basis. And if they do that, then we will have to prorate the amounts to reflect the proper ownership percentage for that portion of the year. So you need to pay attention as to how is the net income being reported here, okay? 
All right, and so based on this information for the first six months, we have, remember, we still own the 40%. Um, and so uh, bottom had reported net income of 70,000. So 40% of that is the 28. We increased our investment account. We increased our equity and investee account on the income statement uh, with the same amount. And we have also received 40% of the dividends that was for the first six months again. And then we decreased the investment account uh, accordingly. Now, if we were going to do a recap uh, of these transactions for 2018 from January 1st through July 1st, then we can see that on January 1st, we started with the carryover balance of 320. Uh, we decreased the account by our share of the dividends. We increased the account by our share of net income. So we have a balance of 336000 Now we said that we sold one-fourth of this investment for 110000 So this is going to have to be either a loss or a gain uh, recognized due to this transaction, just like any other asset. And so we received the cash in this case of 110,000. And how we figure the basis of this one fourth in bottom that we've sold is we take one fourth of this uh, new balance as of July 1st. Okay, so one fourth of the July 1st adjusted balance for the investment in bottom. And so that comes out to 84,000. So we are gonna have to decrease that one fourth because we no longer have those shares. So we decrease the investment in bottom. And then we recognize in this case, a gain for the difference. If the investment were to be uh, greater than the 110, let's say, let's say for example, that it was 120, in that case, we would recognize a loss on the sale rather than a gain. And this gain is reported on the income statement. And that concludes our presentation for today.